Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you today the Goulet Nibs. Hello there, I'm Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and InkNouveau.com. And I am getting to do something today that I've wanted to do for a very long time. And that is to introduce my very own line of fountain pen nibs. Now it's not really a dream that a lot of people have, but it's something that I've wanted to do for quite a while now. And it ties all the way back to my pen making roots. Back before the Goulet Pen Company was into uh, retailing and paper and ink and all these other things, really before we were even into fountain pens, um, I started out as a pen maker, for those of you that aren't aware of that. Uh, this is the first pen that I ever made. It is a slimline ballpoint, you know, very fancy. Um, no, not really. It's pretty laughable to me now, but it does um, have an important place in history because that is the pen that really got me started on this track to lead Goulet pens where it is today. Um, now, of course, my wife Rachel was an integral part of all that, and I would be remiss without giving her a lot of credit for pulling the wagon during that time and putting up with all my crazy ideas to get us to where we are today. But in any case, that tells you a little bit of backstory about where I came from before I got into fountain pens. Now, eventually, I did stumble into fountain pens. Um, once I discovered fountain pens, pen making almost went completely by the wayside. And part of the reason for that is because as an independent pen maker, it's incredibly difficult for you to get your own nibs made, mainly because you have to buy in such massive quantities that it's just far outside of the financial reach of just about any pen maker, uh, independent pen maker, to be able to do that. Um, so the quality of the nibs are so-so and, you know, uh, you're just, you're really limited as an independent person. And I was never really able to make it work myself. So I ended up going the retailing route. Um, very glad I did. Very happy where I am now. But I always kind of in the back of my mind thought, oh, you know, I wish I could have made pen making work. A um, little bit down the line, um, Noodlers came along. Now we were carrying Noodlers inks. Um, and Nathan Tardif, who's the man that created Noodlers, um, was big into vintage pens, did pen repair for uh, decades before he ever got into ink. Um, he was making ink at the time, been doing so for about seven or eight years, and decided that he was going to start making his own pens. Um, not hand turning them like the way I did, but, you know, coordinating them and having them made in a factory. Um, and he decided to come out with this pen, which is called the Nib Creeper. This was a standard nib pen. If you've uh, only become associated with Noodlers recently, you're probably only aware of the Flex pens. But in the early days of Noodlers, they actually came out with standard nib pens. It was like a fine medium nib, um, one size, and that was it. Um, and this pen that I have right here is actually the first Noodlers pen I ever held in my hand. At the time, Goulet Pen Company, we were only carrying, I think, Platinum Preppies, maybe. Um, we were not big into pens at the time, which is funny, because we were called the Goulet Pen Company, as a kind of a carryover from my pen making days. Uh, but, <clears throat> you know, it is what it is. So we, we decided to take kind of a leap of faith and say, what the heck, we'll, we'll carry these little Noodlers pens and just see how they do. Well, then a couple months later, Noodlers announced they were going to start to get into flexible nib pens. And for those of you that were around at the time, this was like late 2010. Um, flexible nib pens were something that was only available either in something expensive like the Namiki Falcon or the Pilot Metal Falcon, um, or it was available in vintage pens, which were even more expensive, you know, because they were incredibly rare. There really wasn't an affordable flexible nib fountain pen back then. Um, so it was really quite revolutionary for noodlers to come out with a pen, especially in the $14 range, that had a flexible nib. And um, back then, supply was incredibly limited. We would go like six months in between getting stock. It was complete madness. And anyone of you who were around for that, you remember, it was madness. Um, that, thankfully, is not the case anymore. Now, there's three different models of Noodler's Flex Pens. Um, the Nib Creeper is not the one I'm going to focus on too much. I just thought it was neat because I had this literally is the pen that got the ball rolling for Goulet Pens with Fountain Pens. So. Um, I just wanted to show you that, but 
Um, really what I'm going to focus on here today is the Conrad and the Ahab. Now those are the bigger Noodler's pens and they use a number six size nib. And that, uh, those pens only come available with a flexible nib. There is no standard nib option. There never has been a standard nib option for those pens. Noodler's has decided to focus on flex nibs. They don't want to divert their attention. I say they. It's really Nathan Tardif. He's basically one guy coordinating all the pen making and design, makes all the inks himself by hand. It's, it's quite incredible. Uh, but anyway, he's a man of very limited time and he just, he just made the decision to focus on flex pens because that's where more he could better serve the fountain pen world, and I very much encourage him to do that. Uh, but at the same time, he really encourages people to take any standard nib size that they have, you know, it's a number two for this nib creeper pen, or it's a number six for the Conrad and the Ahab. He encourages people to replace these flexible nibs with whatever nibs they want of this size, whether you've got a vintage one or a modern one that'll happen to fit. Um, he's very happy for people to be doing that. Um, he designed his pens to be, uh, have the nibs swapped. He has ebonite feeds so that you can adjust them and heat set them yourself uh, if, it's, if it's so necessary for these nibs. Um, and he makes them friction fit so that you can just slide them in and out and, and pop out whatever you, you want and put in whatever you want. Um, so that is kind of unusual for most pen makers. Usually pen makers will say, you know, only use our nibs and, and it makes sense, you know, if you've got a warranty and you've got to make sure that your pen is flowing properly and so on and so forth, you know, the Noodler's pens have gotten a bit of a reputation for flow and, you know, nib issues and stuff like that in the past. And, Part of that is because they are so versatile and so tinkery and they require you to be a little more involved in your pen than some other ones do. Um, but for those of you that love them, you love them. For those of you that hate them, you hate them. And I completely understand both sides. Um, but this is going to be for the people that love the pens. Hopefully, uh, if you hate them, you, won't, uh, you probably won't have gotten this far in the video anyway. <laughs> but in any case, um, Really what I'm getting at here is that um, Nathan really likes people to be able to swap their nibs out. And he, because he doesn't offer any standard nib on these pens, um, I was getting a lot of questions from customers about what nibs could fit them. You know, they, they like this flex nib, but they don't want to use it all the time, or they're just not able to make flex writing work for them. So is there another nib that can work for them, and so on and so forth. And up until now, the answer was always, well, you know, you might be able to find some nibs somewhere, but you kind of have to know where to look and know what you're doing to get it. Uh, well, I, I plan to make that a lot easier today because um, we now offer number six size nibs in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad, as well as 1.1 and 1.5 millimeter stub italics. So uh, these are nibs that will easily fit onto the Ahab and the Conrad and allow you to pretty quickly convert the pen into a standard nib pen and go on about your business and write to your heart's content. So I am pretty excited to do this. It kind of ties back to my old pen making days when I never felt like I was quite big enough to be with the real pen companies and have my own nib. And um, now, you know, pen making is long in my past, but it's kind of neat to be able to rehash a little bit of that, a little bit of that passion, a little bit of that um, kind of the goal that I made for myself to get my own nibs one day, um, to be able to do that. And the Noodler's pens are the perfect vehicle um, to be able to do that. So uh, without further ado, let me show you the Goulet number six nibs and how to put them onto a Noodler's Ahab and Conrad. And here they are. I'm actually incredibly pleased with how the logo turned out on these. If you notice, we've got the little GP logo with the ink splatter. You might recognize this from our Twitter avatar. Um, it's also the watermark we use on our pictures and um, that splatter is something we came up with years ago um, and have it on our website banner and all that stuff. So it's kind of a signature thing with Goulet. You know, we're really big into ink. Um, ink is kind of how we got our start. Um, the blog is Ink Nouveau and uh, this splatter is kind of symbolic of, you know, the fun and the craziness that uh, is appealing about fountain pens in general. So the GP is definitely kind of cool to have on these nibs. Um, I'm really, really thrilled that we were able to do, do that on these nibs. Um, 
The different op offerings are, you know, extra fine, which you'll see here is EF on the top, fine, medium, broad, then a 1.1 and a 1.5 stub italic. Um, now, if you know your italics, a stub is going to be pretty rounded corners. You know, it's going to be smooth. It's not going to be crisp. Um, so you're going to have um, a little less variation than you would with a true italic, but honestly, you don't see a lot of true italics anyway. Pretty much anything coming from a pen company these days is a stub. It's rare that you get a crisp italic. Usually that's only in vintage pens or things that are custom ground by a nibmeister. So if you're familiar at all with Yovo nibs, um, they are generally smooth with a hint of feedback. So they're not going to be, you know, like writing on, you know, ice with a hot stick of butter kind of smooth. Um, there will be just a little bit of, of touch to them on the paper. Um, and that's kind of their, their design. They are, um, you know, that way they're still very smooth. Um, they are, and they flow well. They're German made, so the nib size is going to run a little bit broader than some of the Japanese nibs that you may be familiar with. Um, so I'll give you a breakdown here. This is in the nib nook, but um, the extra fine is going to be about equivalent to, you know, say a Lamy or Edison. Um, you know, any other company that uses, you know, German nibs is going to be fairly similar. It's not going to be super like hairline fine. Um, but it's going to be, you know, I think an fine enough for most people. In the, um, I use the Ahab to do this writing sample here with Noodler's Black. And Noodler's Black is a fairly wet ink. The Ahab has a pretty wide open feed. Um, it's a pretty wet pen because in order to get the flow that you need on a flex pen, it's going to write pretty wet. So pretty much any nib that you put in this pen is going to flow kind of wet. So keep that in mind. But the extra fine nib, here it is. Um, I did find the fine, it's thicker definitely than the extra fine, but it's not a world of difference between the extra fine and fine. So if you're kind of on the fence, um, you know, the fine is going to be great for most people. If you really like to write fine, the extra fine is probably going to be a good way for you to go. Um, the medium really kind of steps it up. There's a noticeable difference in how wet the medium writes versus the fine. So the extra fine and fine is not a huge difference, but there's a definite noticeable difference between a fine and a medium. So I would say if you're on the fence between extra fine and fine, you know, that decision is not as, or that decision might be a little bit harder to make than fine and medium, because if you like it to be wet and bigger, medium is the way to go. If you want it to be thinner, fine is going to be the way to go. The broad on this thing is just a big wet snake. It just really gushes out. Um, very, very broad, very wet. For those of you that like broad, wet nibs, you're going to be really happy with this one. Then we've got the 1.1 and the 1.5 millimeter stubs. Um, now, um, on the cross stroke, I didn't find there to be uh, that much of a noticeable difference between the 1.1 and the 1.5. On the down stroke, there is. Um, the 1.5, though, has kind of a sweet spot. I mean, in general, when you're using italic nibs, there is kind of a sweet spot because it's basically, you know, kind of flat on the end of the nib. So you won't want to have it rotated too much because then the whole thing's not touching on the page. You, they're a little less forgiving uh, when you're writing in terms of the rotation of the pen in your hand than the other uh, nibs are. So keep that in mind when you're using the stubs. If you're familiar with any kind of stubs, it's going to be no different than those. Uh, but I found the 1.5 in particular is very, um, you know, it's very particular about the way you hold it. And I, and I don't think that's out of line for, for most nibs of that size. So here I have a Noodler's Ahab and a Noodler's Conrad. These are both the clear demonstrator versions because, well, I'm demonstrating, so I thought it was appropriate. I want you to be able to see everything that's going on. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to replace the nib on the Noodler's Ahab, because the two pens are a little bit different, and your technique for doing it is going to be different for these two pens. So the Noodler's Ahab, it's a fairly large pen. The number six nib definitely fits this thing well. Take the cap off. The way that this pen works, if you're not familiar with it already, is it's got a body that you can remove, it has a piston that you can also remove. It has a breather tube attached to the back of the black feed. And the feed and the nib are friction fit inside the grip section. 
Now the thing about the Ahab that I'm not sure most people are aware of is that it has, fits into the grip section in a particular way. You can't just stick it in any which way you want. It is kind of a, have a groove cut as to where the nib needs to go. And that's different than the Conrad. The way to get this nib out of the pen, you can either do it by pulling the nib and the feet out together, or you can actually just pull the nib out. I'll show you both techniques. Honestly, I usually only pull the nib out because the feed itself doesn't really need to move. The best way to get just the nib out is to grab right at the base of the nib, okay? And I like to do it with the nib on top, kind of like that. And you can either just grab and gently pull in this direction, or you can kind of wiggle it back and forth a little bit as you're kind of pulling it out. That's usually if it's stuck, it's better to kind of wiggle it a little bit. What you don't want to do is grab and squeeze your fingers together any harder than you have to to hold on to the nib. Because if you squeeze really hard, that can throw your nib tines out of alignment. So you want to be careful uh, just a little bit. But you shouldn't need a great deal of pressure. So I'm just going to grab and slide right out just like that. Or again, if it's kind of firm, if you kind of rock it back and forth, then it works itself out pretty easily. Now the feed itself does have the breather tube attached. You can leave the breather tube on there or take it off, whatever is your preference. Um, the breather tube doesn't really affect uh, you know, the way that it writes with a flex versus a non-flex nib. So you, know, you can leave it on, take it off, whatever is best for you. Um, but if you look inside the grip section here, and it may be kind of hard to tell on the clear one, but where the feed fits in is kind of round and then it's a little fatter at the top where the nib is going to fit in. So there is kind of a specific way that needs to fit in there. Now if you want to fit both the nib and the feed in together, you can definitely do that. I'm going to grab an extra fine. So I've got my Goulet nib here. If you want to put the nib and the feed in together, then you basically just align them kind of like this. You want to have about one millimeter of spacing between the edge of the feed and the edge of the nib and just kind of rest it in there, just like that. You can either grab with your pointer finger on top of the nib and your thumb beneath, or if you want to do it the other way, whatever's best for you, I'm naturally inclined to kind of want to do it this way. You want to look at your grip section and have it so that you're aligning the fatter, more open part with where the nib is going to go. And it'll feel pretty unnatural to you if you try to put it in the wrong way. See, if I rotate it and put it in the wrong way, it'll go in somewhat and it's going to stop me right about there which is too far out. If I put it in the right way, it's going to go in more easily. And actually on the clear one even, you can see where there's this groove that's kind of cut out where that nib will fit naturally in the grip section. And then you just kind of slide it in there and the nib will kind of set itself in there. The feed has a positive stop and it'll kind of naturally just go where it needs to go. Now it is possible for the feed to be a little bit out of alignment. Let me try to do that intentionally here so I can show you what it looks like when that happens. There's a good example. That is not really ideal. You want the feed to be right in the center of that nib. You can either pull it out and try it again, or if you're talented enough, which I appear not to be, you can rotate it while it's in the grip. But either way, you really just want to get it back to where it's in alignment. And then if you need to you know, push the nib in there, you just kind of grab it by the shoulders a little bit and pull it down and it'll naturally stop you and not let you go in any further than that. So it may seem like the Goulet nib doesn't stick out quite as far as the Noodler's because of that extra fine um, nib designation being kind of buried in the grip section like that, but that's normal. I mean, if you compare the two nibs side by side here, they are the same length. So it's not going to change in terms of your hand position or anything like that, or how far back you need to hold the pen in order to write with it, it just appears like the nib's in really far because of where that inscription is. And that, in essence, is how you work the Ahab. When, if you have the breather tube installed here, what I find is best is to push the piston down and then put the breather tube in. That keeps the breather tube from getting caught up in the top. And then you can go on, fill your pen, reassemble it, and then you have a Goulet nib in your Noodler's Ahab. I inked up my Ahab with Noodler's Black for the sake of time. I didn't show it doing that because this video is getting long enough already. Um, 
but I've got a Noodler's nib in here now. So this is your typical Noodler's um, flex nib. Um, I'm definitely not like a flex expert, but you can see here about how that's working. You know, wet flow, broad strokes, and so on. So that's your typical nib. Now, if you want to switch back and forth, you can definitely do that. And if you don't mind getting your hands inky, you can even do that while you have the pen inked up. It's definitely easier to do without the pen inked up because you won't have ink to contend with, but I don't really care. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all inky. So I'm gonna put a fine nib on here. What the heck, I've got one handy. So I'm just gonna slide it on here. I'm gonna let my ink flow to the tip. What I find helps to get this thing going is if you have a um, paper towel and you can kind of like touch the tip on the, on the top side and kind of draw the ink out a little bit. If you are gonna be replacing that nib on an inked up pen, it's definitely easier to get it going if you're actually filling with the nib that you're writing with. Um, it can take it a second if you're swapping the nib like this. But I think I've got it going here. There we go. So now I've got the Goulet Fine in an Ahab. And that just feels great. Now for the Conrad. The Conrad is a little bit trickier, okay? It definitely still works, um, but there uh, is a compromise with it. And I'll show you what that compromise is right now. Um, the difference, the main difference between the Conrad and the Ahab, it uses the same nib, same feed, but the main difference in the pen's design is that, if I pull these out, if you look in here, the grip is completely round. So what that means is that you can put the nib and the grip in any orientation that you want, and it's going to hold about the same. The, that's, that's a good thing, uh, except that that means that you have to have the nib in there to be able to get the feed in there as well. Um, basically, the feed without the nib is just going to drop straight back into the pen because it's essentially a straight cylinder, a cylinder that just shoots back like that. But if you have the nib and the feed together, then you can set them in place, and that's about where you're going to want it. Now, if you are going to be using the other pen, you know, this one, if you, if you just pull the nib out on its own, that feed is just going to be slipping and slopping all over the place. So you really kind of have to pull the two out together in the Conrad. So let me grab a Goulet nib here. I've got a 1.1. So if I take that and put that in here, for whatever reason, this nib needs to be set down a little bit further into the pen than this one does because it's not contoured. It's not, it's not uh, made to fit and accept the nib quite the same as the Ahab is. So in order to get this nib to fit, or well, it's not even just the Goulet nib. Honestly, it's any number six nib that's not the Noodler's Flex nib. Um, you have to set it a little bit further into the pen than you do with the Flex nib. And where that becomes a bit of an issue is if you take and you move the mechanism all the way forward, it's actually going to hit the back of that feed. And if you keep going, it'll push that nib and feed out just a couple of millimeters. And that is not going to provide quite enough stability when you're writing, mainly because the nib needs to have a little more pressure on it in the grip section to be able to hold. So if you start writing with it this far out, it, the nib is going to work its way back and the feed's going to stay in place and you're going to end up with this absolutely gushing uh, pen, like so. So you have to keep in mind that if you are going to be using basically any nib besides the Noodler's Flex nib in a Conrad, you're going to have to keep in mind that this mechanism is going to hit the feed. And it's not really so much of a problem because you can still fill the pen all the way, uh, but you want to make sure that when you get a little bit of resistance on the mechanism, you stop. And that's about it. I mean, the nib and feed is still held in there really well, uh, but you want to make sure that you're not going to 
um, you know, push your nib and feed out every time you go to fill your pen. So it's just a little something to be aware of. You know, if you're a tinkerer and you're replacing your nib anyway, something like this probably isn't going to scare you off too bad. But I did want to make sure that it was something that I definitely pointed out. So even having the feed in a little bit further to fit a non-flex nib, you can still get a full filling on this pen. And I'll show you how here. I've got a bottle of Noodler's Apache Sunset. It's one of my favorites. Um, so I'm going to get a filling here. If there is any air left in the top, it's going to be minimal like that. I didn't even do anything special to get that. You can either just expel that back out into the bottle and then suck it up again, and that will help to get some of the air out. I mean, that is really a pretty small air bubble inside that pen. Um, or what you can do is turn it upside down, um, get the air bubble to the top, try and expel the air out that way, and then just get as much ink into the pen as you can this way. But honestly, that's, that's a pretty darn good volume of ink. And then if I take and just wipe it off, like you would with anything else. And another thing, this is normal, but there's going to be ink on top of the nib in between your grip section and the nib. I get asked that a lot, if this is normal for the Noodler's pens. And yeah, it definitely is. You can really only see it on the demonstrator models, but that is definitely normal. And here I've got the Goulet 1.1. Looking good. Voila. I do hope you enjoy these nibs. For what they are, I think they're pretty awesome, but then again, I'm pretty biased because not only am I a retailer selling them, but I help to develop them too. So I do hope that you'll check on gouletpens.com to see the customer reviews. And if you do use them yourself, please give me feedback on them because I would really love to hear what you think. Thank you so much for all the support that you've had for me and the Goulet Pen Company. Um, I'm really excited to be able to offer these nibs to you. Please, I would love your feedback. So if you could, hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube channel, my blog, whatever, you, whatever channel you have to reach back to me. I would love to hear what you think about these nibs. I would love to hear any feedback that you have. If you start using the nibs, I'd love to hear that too. These nibs are really here just to enhance the writing experience of the fountain pen community and to be able to offer something uh, to our fans and customers that uh, hasn't been, been widely available before. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. And as always, write on.